Assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome. I'm going to let you guys uh, hop on, inshallah, and give yourself a few minutes. I'm just going to make sure that... Um, oh, sorry. Let me just turn my media off. Um, those of you that are just joining in, um, those of you that are just joining in, feel free to share uh, to you know, your pages and feel free to invite others. Inshallah, we're going to be doing a collective dua um, in today's session as well with Sheikh Omar, Sheikh Amar. So definitely want to um, you know, have as many of us, inshallah, part of that. Wa alaikum as salam, Nabila, Samaya, Radad. Thank you for being here with us. Wa alaikum as salam, Najiba. Just making sure the technical side is um, up and running. Wa alaikum as salam. Khadija, Shanaz, Nadia, Sana, and Saf, welcome you guys. Lubna, Farida, Yasmina, Arij, Hadia, wa alaikum as you guys. So nice to see, alhamdulillah, the incredible, incredible global community of everyone here. Wa alaikum Tisha, so good to see you. Ahmed, Sayyid. When I see I'm familiar names. You guys are going to have to bear with me. So many, um, so many of you, mashallah, the students of Sheikh Mohammed that I can see. Welcome. Wankasam Hamad, so good to see you here. Didi. Saida, Wankasam. Jazakla khair, Fazia. And we're just waiting um, for a couple minutes, making sure that the technical aspect is up and running, you guys. So inshallah, just be patient as we make sure that like everyone's hopped on and everyone is able to access. Wa alaikum assalam. I'm gonna try to read some of the salams, um, inshallah, best I can. Wa alaikum assalam, Ruby, Mafaza. Nazia, Rashid, and um, you know, again, those of you that are hopping on, if you've got friends, family uh, that you know, subhanAllah, want to take part in, in the dua together, inshallah, for Sheikh Mohammed, like that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to have a collective dua with Sheikh Omar, Sheikh Amar in our program today. So do invite others. You know, the goal is we want to send as much dua as we can because that is what we can really send for Sheikh Mohammed. Um, so take that opportunity to spread across. Um, and invite others. I'm just going to wait like two more minutes before we start because I want, like I said, I want to make sure I give the opportunity for everyone to be part of this. I know so many of you, subhanAllah, have been messaging and have been sharing, obviously, the grief that you're feeling, the shock um, that, you know, you experienced, obviously, like all of us with the sudden loss of our beloved Sheikh Mohammed Al Sharif. May Allah be, have mercy on him and peace with him. So, um, you know, we want to have as many of you part of this, being able to join. So go ahead and you know invite others, share the link. Um, alhamdulillah, there's we're, we're broadcasting on like many, many platforms, um, and so lots of links that you can share to invite others to take part. Inshallah, come together with us today, not only to obviously share our memories and a beautiful reminder, um, but also, alhamdulillah, to make dua for our teacher. Inshallah, together. Alhamdulillah. Just okay. welcome, Carol. So good to see you. Welcome, Sam, Aisha, Lubna, Khadija. Malikum Islam. And Alhamdulillah, today is, you know, Alhamdulillah, we're. I'm, I'm gonna do a proper intro, guys. Give me like a second. I'm gonna. We're going to start, inshallah. Um, so, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad abdika wa nabiyaka wa rasulika nabi al-Ami wa la ali wa sahbi wa sallam. So, welcome. Uh, those of you that don't know me, my name is Razia Hanabi. I'm part of the Discovery U team, which is one of the other incredible organizations and institutions that Sheikh Muhammad established. Um, and today I'm here on behalf of Al-Maghrib and the Discovery U team. And today is about grieving together. It's about making dua together for our teacher and beloved Sheikh. 
uh, for his family for sharing. You know, today's about sharing the reminders and um, and some of the stories that touched our heart with Sheikh. It's to comfort ourselves, each other, and you know, the rudeness of death is that brings clarity to the mind. And inshallah, the goal is that as we're all here grieving together, um, that we're going to alhamdulillah use this moment, this jolt that we've all experienced to only carry uh, the legacy and the light that Shaykh Muhammad spread and used uh, to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to push even harder in all of our lives. And so welcome. Today it's going to be, um, alhamdulillah, we have Shaykh Omar Suleiman, we have um, Sister Manal Begwala, Shaykh Amar al-Shukri and myself with you. So we're going to kind of go through it together. Um, you're, you know, you're active in the chat already, which is wonderful. This is an opportunity for you to also grieve. I know that many of you are experiencing um, that heaviness and you have maybe not had an outlet or you have not had someone to talk to. And so alhamdulillah, this is going to be an opportunity to do that together. Um, and you're gonna, uh, I, you know, many of you have been posting in the different incredible communities and groups that we have at Discover You, even in the Al Maghrib groups, um, that you know, you you're having a tough time maybe attending certain family gatherings or just kind of taking part right now and things because it's still so fresh. I'm gonna tell you what I told students, and I'm gonna tell myself this, but I'm I'm allowing space to feel the grief. So um, please forgive me if I have my moments where, you know, I feel like my heart and my stomach are in my throat at times. Um, but you know, I keep I keep thinking he's going to appear on camera today, um, and he's going to show up, and he's going to say, "Are you ready?" And those of you that took uh, Visionary and were in his programs, you know, Marshall, the energy he would bring with that. So the grief is still heavy for so many of us, and um, inshallah, you know, give yourself space to have those moments. And I reflect, Subhanallah, I was at a gathering last night where um, Sheikh Abdul Nasser Jangda, who's one of the Al Maghrib instructors, was sharing a reminder on the Prophet. Salam's passing and those final moments and you know the sheer devastation that the Sahaba felt in those moments and he was the most beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know the greatest calamity that our could experience was at the death of the Prophet Salam. and despite the incredible grief that the Sahaba were feeling they pulled it together and when it was time to do the work they got together they did the work that needed to be done and so I'm here today on behalf of the Al Maghrib and the Discover You team who are all grieving with you. Um, the teachers who were so close to Sheikh Mohammed, um, not only as colleagues, but as students, as you know, him being a mentor to them, and they're still grieving and absorbing that loss. And so we're all here for you. We're all here because we know that all his students felt, alhamdulillah, closeness and connection to him. And so we're here with you, inshallah. And we pray that by coming together and in the coming days, that it alhamdulillah allows us to channel our grief, to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for Allah, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that strength to inshallah, like I said, take his legacy and continue it even further. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter him among the righteous. He was truly a nation builder and may Allah reunite all of us with him in Jannah for those. I mean, and I, and I really want to emphasize um, a message to all of you who are here, who alhamdulillah were one of his students, got to experience um, the impact of his work, that your connection to what he built doesn't end here. He knew that this was bigger than him and that's what he called to. Your connection to the programs, to the institutions he built, you're still part of this. So you're still part of Discovery, you are still part of Al Maghrib, you are and you will be part of that global family. So if you're sitting here and you've been wondering like now what, you know, I, I like that community is broken, it's not. This was always bigger than him and he made sure to remind us of that and that is exactly how he designed and lived, mashallah, his life and the programs. So please remember that, internalize that, that you are still part of this global community, alhamdulillah. And death is always a reminder to all of us of what dunya really is. And Sheikh, mashallah, never held back from talking about the reality of death. You know, he wasn't, he, it wasn't something he avoided. He actively talked about it in his classes. And dunya is an intoxicant and a distraction. That was something that, you know, he regularly reminded us of. And Allah reminds us through the death of loved ones, of our teachers, that death escapes no one, not even our leaders. So we need to wake up from that intoxicant. You know, for some of us who have been maybe stalling on certain aspects of our growth, stagnant in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, recognize and maybe inshallah take this opportunity to wake up from that intoxicant this life and being is about responsibility 
Sheikh Mohammed didn't take that responsibility very lightly. And I encourage all of us to ask ourselves, how do we take this responsibility? The responsibility to learn, to reflect, to live it and share it. Just as Sheikh Mohammed, mashallah, embodied that in his life and the legacy that he left. The force that Sheikh you know, pulled people into, it was Allah Ta'ala's words, right? The Quran, the way he would examine it, dua, that's what we want to hold on to. That's the force that we want to use. Um, last year, subhanAllah, when I met some of the Discovery U students, they were so excited um, after having taken Visionaire and they said, you know, we'd love to meet Sheikh Mohammed in person and we'd love to talk to him. Um, and, and I just kind of like had a little laugh. I was like, um, actually, he's quite introverted and, you know, he wouldn't be much of a talker if you met him in person. And they were just show, so shocked by that because subhanAllah, you guys know his energy online was so different. Like he showed up fully because he loved his students. He showed up fully, um, you know, when he taught, and mashallah, uh, some of the al-Maghrib teachers have kind of been sharing this um, in some of the um, some of the talks that they've been doing the last day, that you know, he had a whole system for when he would teach a class, like physically, you know, um, changing his rhythm for the week, eating lighter, because like, he took that responsibility so seriously. And so I just want you to like remember, and inshallah, you know, like some of some of the things that were behind the scenes that you didn't realize, like he didn't just show up to the class. Um, subhanAllah, he poured his heart into it and he loved each and every one of you. So many students who share, like, I remember him giving me a shout out or I remember he would like comment on this. He was always paying attention behind the scenes, um, subhanAllah, to each student. Like, it, you know, you, you think that he didn't notice you, but he did. And I, um, I remember, subhanAllah, when I had heard the passing of Steve Jobs and so many people sharing how he was like voted the worst boss ever. Um, and I felt so sad that I'm like, this man has passed away, yet these people are still so hurt by his actions that they can't let go of that. And I feel like a true testament to Sheikh Mohammed is, I may Allah have mercy on him, is that everyone who worked with him, you guys, like loved working with him, for him, and, um, you know, like people, you know, some of the people who are a little bit more acquainted in my life are just like, wow, like you were, you know, you had such a close relationship um, because it wasn't just about him being my boss, right? Or being my mentor, like subhanAllah, the way he nurtured people, the relationships that he developed, he never made you feel inferior. He wouldn't be intimidating. It actually took me time to like break out of that because I would be intimidated, but that was my own, um, you know, feelings. It wasn't that he he caused that in any way. And so I had to adjust because he was constantly, alhamdulillah, making you feel comfortable being able to contribute. And that was the kind of culture he built. And I think a lot of you who are students here can attest to that when he would interact with you on sessions in the classes, alhamdulillah, so open. And, you know, again, I, the incredible human connection that he had. One of the things, um, you know, inshallah, I just wanted to share like just short stories and experiences I had with him that I want you guys to be able to like um, enjoy with me was that he was never above learning. So there was a specific incident last year where he had to take um, certain direction in, in our discovery. He was going to take this direction and I didn't fully agree with it. We were having a difference of values. Subhanallah, he called me and spent 45 minutes sincerely listening to me and discussing his point, sharing you know his point of view, listening to what I had to say, letting me argue and rebuttal. And you know, at the end I agreed with his point. I saw his perspective and he wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't end the call until he made sure I was fully satisfied with like where that conversation had ended. And I remember hanging up and thinking like, who does that? Like what kind of boss, subhanAllah, does that where he, you know, sets aside that time, gave me the, like he could have easily taken that decision and direction. He did not need my permission to do it, but he was so respectful and genuine and valued everyone's opinion. And that is so rare. That is so rare. And so I, I share this story because I pray that all of us can, you know, be, keep our egos in check. That we can, inshallah, as we move forward and honor his legacy, it again, it's about, you know, being focused on the mission as he was and being able to put his ego aside. Alhamdulillah, the incredible work institutions, teams, community established, I, I truly believe were so impactful because it was never about his ego or about, or about him. Um, and we know that, alhamdulillah, one of the signs of a true leader is that they want their students to exceed them. He was about empowering all those around him. And one of the things I've been hearing um, from some of the al-Maghrib shayukh is that's exactly what they felt, that he wanted them to e do even better than him. He saw that potential and he would continuously encourage them to do better. 
alhamdulillah, you know, he wasn't seeking the spotlight. Even at Discovery, um, he had shared with some of the students in the past few years. And I kind of wonder now if this was like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preparing um, him and us where in the last few years, he said, I want you guys to design programs um, that don't center around me. Like you guys serve the people in whatever capacity. Let's find, inshallah, you know, those other people create those programs. And so that was, you know, something we've been doing actively at Discovery in the last few years. And even with Al-Maghrib, as you guys can see, subhanAllah, he had set up the system. He was so confident. Alhamdulillah, in the way the team ran it, the instructors, the, you know, the content, the classes that were being taught. And he was able to, alhamdulillah, set up those systems, walk away and continuously focus on building and growing. And alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I hope we take uh, the lessons from that, inshallah. And, you know, in terms of his legacy, we can sit here and talk about, and inshallah, we're going to with, you know, some of the other um, speakers that we have today. We're not going to remember him just for one thing. I think what's incredible about his legacy is that there's so many incredible contributions, big and small, that he's left. Um, so many of the community leaders, you guys, that across North America that we know, Subhanallah, their journey started with Al Maghrib. Um, some of them, some of them have been sharing, and inshallah, in the coming days, I hope to actually um, showcase them more of them. People you would not imagine who were Subhanallah brought, you know, started their knowledge journey, started their dawa work through Al Maghrib, and even some of the uh, mashallah, you know, powerhouse. Um, you know, Chris, the CEO of Launchgood, he's often shared how much his uh, Sheikh Mohammed's mentorship was, you know, crucial for his growth and how the impact he's having. Um, he made Islamic knowledge accessible um, and a part of our practice. And I think that's definitely one of the parts of the legacy that many of us are holding on to. And someone shared today, you know, for women, many times we're um, in, in the 90s and, and even late 90s and 2000s where women did not have access maybe to that traditional knowledge. Alhamdulillah, he made it accessible. Um, Sheikh Walid Basuni yesterday was sharing how Sheikh Mohammed, you know, made sure that the way he designed his class and what he taught his instructors to make sure that, you know, the way the sisters were treated with that respect, given their adequate place um, and making sure that, you know, they felt included in that process. And subhanAllah, I'm sure many women can can share that. There's a whole generation of us who identify life before Al-Maghrib and after Al-Maghrib, right? Our knowledge journey, Alhamdulillah, he made it part of our practice. And so we stand on the shoulder of this giant and alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, that we, we're here today and we can recognize that. So let his passing be a reminder of our destination. Let Sheikh Mohammed's passing be a reminder of our destination because this will help us to distinguish between the opportunities that we need to seize today and the ones we need to resist. It breaks my heart when I'm seeing some of the messages of students who are saying, subhanAllah, I, I was planning on taking Visioner finally next year. You know, I finally was going to take that class with him and that opportunity is gone. And so I hope it's a reminder for us to maybe not delay some of the knowledge and access we have to our teachers who are with us now. Right. Seize those opportunities. Don't don't think you have tomorrow. Don't think. And, you know, inshallah, like the death in the prophet said death, um, the one who remembers death often is successful because it creates that urgency of action. Alhamdulillah, and not what is knowledge without action. And so let this um, let let us inshallah take the reminder from this. And he built communities. Alhamdulillah, he built communities, and we remember him for that. And we hold on to that community. And so you guys are here right now, all of you, mashallah. I'm like I can't even read the incredible comments that you're all putting in, but you're part of a global community. And regardless of where you are in the world, alhamdulillah, you've been able to connect with one another. So hold on to that hold on to that rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is what Shaykh Muhammad called to. Always remember that his message and the force he used was about not him. It was bigger than him. And that's what we hold on to, inshallah. And we carry on that legacy. So let us rejoice in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray that our dear teacher is greeted by Allah with the promise that Allah makes to the righteous. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah will say to the righteous, O tranquil soul, Return to your Lord well pleased with him and well pleasing to him. So join my servants and enter my paradise. May, the, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow Shaykh Muhammad to be among the righteous and grant him jannah for those and grant his family beautiful patience through this loss. I mean, so inshallah, I'm going to invite Shaykh Omar Suleiman to be here with us. I'm just making sure um, that he's okay. I know. He's joining from overseas. I know we are connections. We're having some challenges. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
thank you so much for being here. I know, subhanAllah, um, the time difference is big right now, but... I hope um, you can hear me, inshallah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Are you able to hear me? Is he there? Uh, are you able to hear me, Sheikh Omar? Okay. I'm just gonna make sure. Um... Yeah, I can. I can hear you. Okay, great. I, I'm. I'm gonna because I know a little bit of. Yeah. So, so go ahead, Sheikh. I'll, I'll let you. Um, you go ahead and you, know, you please share your words. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa la'udwana ila ala al-dhalimin wa al-aqibatu al-mutaqeen. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Um, first of all, I apologize the best I can do with, with the internet that I have um, in this situation. Um, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. To Allah we belong and to Allah we return. It, you know, today I, I had to uh, teach a course and I kind of wrote about um, how surreal it was. Uh, two years ago, I was flying into Malaysia and um, Sheikh Mohammed surprised me at the airport the day before my classes and said that, you know, he flew in from um, Dubai just to attend and just to spend time with me. and. I was absolutely blown away by that gesture. And um, subhanAllah, that's when I received the news in almost an identical situation. Um, you know, that, that he passed away. It was the weirdest thing ever. I looked at my phone, as I'm sure many of you did, multiple times to see if I was understanding and, you know, uh, really reading what I was reading. You know, if it was someone related to him um, or uh, uh you, know, you know something else but not himself you know it just didn't make sense seeing his picture uh and that he passed away it, it, so i it, i thought it was a nightmare i thought it was something that still kind of feels like a bad dream and today honestly just talking about him and saying rahimahullah in class it's not clicking so i think for for myself and i think for a lot of a lot of you probably it's still not clicking but subhanAllah, I, um, you know, seeing him uh, a couple of years ago, what a, what a person, what a brother to fly in from another country just to be there. He said he just wanted to attend the classes. He was really excited. I was teaching a course on Ayyub salam, and he loved, subhanAllah, the story of Ayyub salam, and Sheikh Muhammad loved everything about dua. So he was like, you know, I really wanted to see how you were going to co cover the topic of Dua, the dua of Ayyub and just be with you, you know, and, um, uh, you know, I, what ended up happening is he kind of ended up being like a nurse <laughs> over the weekend. So, you know, Sheikh Mohammed was the best person to kind of be around on a journey. Um, guy was always full of life, always wanted to go out, eat and spend time and talk. Instead, he ended up making, you know, 2 a.m. runs uh, to pick up crackers and uh, and Gatorade and was leaving stuff at my door and checking up on me. Um, you know, stepped in and taught a session for the class so I could get a break, so I could rest a bit. And uh, my my experience with him, and it's actually uh, something I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful to Allah for. Uh, these last two years are actually the most I had been in touch with him than any previous time uh, because of the intensity of that bonding experience. And so I was reading through all of the messages uh, between myself and him over and over and over again, as I'm sure many of those who were close to him were just reading messages. <clears throat> and it, it kind of struck me that, uh, you know, like what a brother, um, what a person who checks in on you, what a person who never fails to reach out. He, he is one of a kind, um, 
truly one of a kind. You know, when you think about, I don't know of anyone like him. I really can't think of anyone that's like him uh, in many ways. So, in some ways, his personality was like a paradox uh, on the stage. And, you know, he was this larger than life figure, um, you know, and someone that had this, this level of confidence and energy that you just didn't see in anyone else. <clears throat> but then when he uh, reached out to you, I mean, he was the most humble person that you could be dealing with. Uh, so it, it was almost a paradox. I mean, his personality doesn't actually make sense in terms of how you bring together the multiple dimensions of it and layers of it. But subhanAllah, one thing about him uh, as a brother, uh, dua was clearly very special to him. So if he sees something you know, you, you you achieve something significant or something happens. You know, I was just reading through our messages. He sends these long, beautiful personal du'as. Um, anything, you know, subhanAllah, I just, I was reading these long, beautiful du'as that he sends every single time something happens. You know, and it, it, you can tell it's, it's significant to him. He's not a copy-paste type of guy. Uh, he... Um, You know, he'll send something that's very involved. Uh, I don't know how he found the time to do it. I don't know how he kept up with so many people the way that he did. It's honestly something I just envy at this point um, to not be able to do that the way that he did. I have no idea how he did it. I have no idea the barakah in his time, subhanAllah. But he would say something like, you know, this made my day. Uh, something that happened to you, you know, of good, this made my day. And he'll just send you this dua. And I was like, SubhanAllah, you know, it's, uh, this is, this is unreal for a person to be this involved in someone's life. <clears throat> I'll also say SubhanAllah that there are very few people that are, are brothers like that, that, you know, that just care about people beyond, um, beyond what's expected of them. Alhamdulillah, but I mean, you know, this is a culture that we, that, that, that he certainly, you know, brought to uh, Al-Maghrib. Uh, there are special, special, special brothers, mashallah, amongst the mashayikh of Al-Maghrib, the fraternity that's here, uh, certainly has a lot to do with his own personal care. You know, uh, mashallah, uh, the first few people always that I hear from, you know, Sheikh Muhammad, uh, Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim, Sheikh Muhammad Thaqi, it's, it's, it's always these brothers, you know, that will reach out. And he kind of created that culture that it's more than just, it's more than just, you know, salam. It's more than just uh, saying a few words to each other, but it's brotherhood. And I think the fact that so many people feel like he was almost exclusively theirs, <laughs> you know, and that they had some sort of exclusive relationship with him. And so many people can share such a personal, involved relationship with him, especially. And all I've been reflecting on uh, is that when we're talking about his legacy right now, I mean, look, he was someone that wanted to start something good, that wanted to uh, nurture something good and wanted to kind of fade into the background and then just be of support, which is, you know, inshallah, I think just the hallmark of sincerity. Uh, when he first, you know, was on the scene, if you will. And I, I sent him a picture of uh, the CD in the middle of the night, which were the night habits of the Prophet Sallallahu and just Qiyam. And I sent him the picture uh, of the CD and he was so happy. I was just sending him pictures of CDs and telling him, I said, that CD, this lecture changed my life. This lecture changed my life. Uh, you know, there was a time where Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif CDs were the, the hardest thing, or not the hardest thing to find, but they were the the greatest thing that was out there, you know, and till now, subhanAllah, so much benefit in those lectures, the passion, he drew you in from the first few words and he wanted Khair to be there and he didn't necessarily have to be at the helm. He just, he loved to initiate and nurture kind of behind the scenes, mentor, support, be a brother. And he genuinely was happy for people's success. He genuinely, genuinely was happy to see Khair extend and continue. Uh, there's just so much to say about that. I also will say this um, because I think it's very important when you talk about the secrets of the righteous. Sheikh Muhammad was not someone that would backbite. 
uh, even people that spoke nastily about him. And if he saw someone speaking in a nasty way about you, you know, he'd message and just say, hey, just keep your head up. Don't respond to anything. Don't say anything. Just keep keep going, keep going, keep going. He gives you that that affirmation always. And he makes dua for you, you know. And when people would come to him and would say to him that, you know, someone's saying this about you, and he just, he, he had no time for it. He had no time for it. And when you talk about barakah and time, you can't think about much that takes away from the barakah of a person's time than backbiting and, and negativity. And I don't remember, you know, it's, it's really phenomenal. I can't remember uh, him speaking bad about someone. I can't remember a conversation uh, with him that involved backbiting, um, you know, especially people in the scene of, of da'wah and that were trying to do good. He just made dua for people and helped that, uh, hope that they would do good and wish them well and wanted to support them. So when you just talk about a brother, uh, he is special. He is one of a kind. He always, always, always was just motivated towards khair and was always thinking about new ways to bring about khair. And I pray that all of us, as we're speaking about him, inshallah, and bearing witness to him, can take lesson from that. Not just, you know, the name of this is lessons from uh, his life. Uh, it's not just a person who gave good lectures. Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif is not being honored the way he is, and this outpouring of love is not just because he had some great lectures on YouTube. To the contrary, I think it's, uh, if you took away everything, which you cannot take away, you know, of just the pure legacy of da'wah and how we all owe him a great debt and we all owe al-Maghrib a great debt. Um, you know, the da'wah as a whole owes al-Maghrib a great debt and owes him a great debt. And we have to continue the sadaqah jariyah of his. If you take away all of that, I just, you know, ni'm al-akh, ni'm al-akh, ni'm al-akh. What a brother. What a brother. What a brother. Um so it's important, you know, that that this family of knowledge uh, sort of really takes from this uh, this experience with him. And subhanAllah, the last time I saw him here in Malaysia, it was due to COVID. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I was I was knocked out in my room uh, kind of all over the place between sweats and, you know, and, and, and chills and fevers. And he just he left like this care package at the door. He didn't wake me up. I told him to wake me up so I could give him a hug. I said, whatever I have, I'm going to cough it all over you before, before I leave. You know, I've got to, I'm saving this big hug for you. And that's one thing about him. He didn't like the long hugs. I, I'm, I'm a hugger. He, was, he wasn't a hugger. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't his thing. Um, you know, and, and I'm like, how do I, uh, I told him, I was like, man, wake me up. Um, you know, so I can say bye to you. He didn't wake me up. He he left all this stuff at the door. And then he left this long message and said, you know, I really wanted you to get some sleep. I was mad at him for not make, waking me up. And so our messages are actually, um, <clears throat> I would open it right now, but I, 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 I can't. Uh, but to the extent of, um, you know, if, if I wanted you to get some rest and uh, next time, you know, next time, inshallah ta'ala, we'll get together, we'll be in full health and good spirits and we can properly hang out. And just a long dua, you know, once again. So our last message in terms of physically meeting was, you know, inshallah ta'ala, next time we get together, be fully healthy and uh, able to enjoy one another's company. And so now I'm just thinking, you know, غَدًا أَلْقَ الْأَحِبَّةِ مُحَمَّدًا وَحِزْبًا what we learned from Bilal رضي الله تعالى عنه that, you know, I, I hope inshallah ta'ala tomorrow I'll meet my beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions. There is a life that exists outside of the life of this world. And the bonds that are formed in this world transcend this world. And the greatest bond that transcends the life of this world is the bond that a servant has to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then after that, that the slaves of Allah have with one another and those ties were formed in their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and I can't wait to hang out with him again. Uh, there is no greater host than uh, Sheikh Muhammad. There is no greater brother to hang out with. Inshallah Ta'ala, I hope, I hope Inshallah Ta'ala, there will be a lot of time to hang out with him in the next realm. All this is, is Antum Musabiqun wa inna inshallah bikum nahiqun. Yaghfir Allah lana wa lakum. That you are the forerunners and inshallah ta'ala we're soon to follow. May Allah forgive us and forgive you. And so it's a lot of du'as for forgiveness. A lot of hope that um, inshallah ta'ala the bonds that were formed in this life will continue into the next life. And... Uh, that's all I can really say about, <laughs> it's not all I can say. I could say a lot more that I'd be taking up from, I know, the beautiful lessons from uh, those that are to come after me. And I just want to say, subhanAllah, that all of those mashayikh that have a, a relationship with him, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comfort all of you, all of his brothers and sisters, Sister Azia, all of you that worked with him on a day-to-day. -day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, comfort you, and reward you uh, for your pain and... Uh, put put blessing and patience in your life as you face this. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comfort his family. Um, I'll say this, that it's important to make dua for his immediate family, the people that were with him every single day. Uh, we all have this relationship that we can claim with him, but there's no one like his family. And, you know, his messages about how he was in, you know, in many ways enjoying the chance to be with his kids in COVID in the lockdown. Uh, we talked a lot in the initial lockdown. He was talking about this bonding that he was having with his children. I remind everyone that his youngest, uh, you know, is, is only three years old. Uh, please make dua for his family. Make dua for him and make dua for his family. Uh, this The public tributes often move on, inshallah, we hope the Sadaqa Jariya will, but the pain that the family carries is, is a long, long, long pain. So when you find yourself a week from now, a year from now, two years from now, uh, thinking about him, make dua for his family as well. Don't forget his wife and don't forget his kids. They will need all the duas that come their way as well. And if you're close enough to them and you can check up on them, uh, then please do uh, check up on them, inshallah ta'ala. Um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on him and to forgive him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept him into a firdaus al-a'la without any form of reckoning, without any form of punishment. May Allah forgive him for any of his shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala join him with the one that he was named after in the highest level of paradise, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be with him and with the prophets and with the martyrs and with the righteous ones. And what a beautiful companionship that is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to go to our graves without grudges, without hatred, without malice, without rancor, with people who bear witness to our goodness and not people who hold burdens from our harm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst his sincere servants that are better in private than they are in public and that are connected to him in every situation whose hearts remain connected to him and connected to all that is beloved to him of people and of deeds may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of the da'wah and all of the great work of al-maghrib and otherwise as a sadaqa jariya for sheikh muhammad and his family may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it heavy on his scales May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comfort his family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow the example that he leaves behind and the goodness of what reaches of du'as and of well-wishing to surround them in blessing for whatever remains of their journey on this earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him better than what he left behind and give them better than what they have sent forward. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala join us all together all together under his throne as those who love each other for his sake. Allahumma ameen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Omar. Um, and I just wanted to say, um, I know I shared this with you over message, but I want to share it with everyone because I think it's so important to just, again, the memories that we can cherish together. Um, Shaykh Omar was someone that Shaykh Muhammad looked um, to as a younger brother. And one that, like, whenever 
Sheikh Omar was gonna, when you would come on a program, I don't know if you could feel it, but he would be like gloating, like a big brother who's like showing off his younger brother. And he was just so, um, so proud of like the accomplishments and the impact. And I just, I hope that you can inshallah, you know, feel that and know that, that um, he was always in your corner. He was, you know, he was always cheering for you and your success. And as you shared that that was a brotherhood that's rare. Um, in the work that we do in the Dawa community to really have someone that wants to step away and be like, no, you, alhamdulillah, like you hold it down. And so um, he he really loved you. So Jazakallah Khair for being here. Jazakallah Khair for sharing the du'as um, and, and just the memories that you have of him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and your family. And may you continue to carry the torch in your in your area, inshallah. Jazakallah Khair. Um, alhamdulillah, for all of you that are here and, you know, have been able to take part in the du'as, we are going to have a closing du'a as well with Sheikh Amar al-Shukbi. Um, and one of the students who's on right now, Khadija, Jazakallah Khairi, reminded me, you know, I'm having moments where I'll remember that, like, if Sheikh was here, I know he he would be like, okay, let's move on. And, you know, he was just kind of like, he, he wasn't, as much as he'd get emotional, um, as much as he'd get emotional, he was also, mashallah, just, again, focused on that work. And I think Sheikh Omar was highlighting that for us as well, that um, he didn't care, you know, what the naysayers were saying. He knew what his mission was and vision. Um, and one of the things he had for those of you that are in his classes and experience was, are you ready to build the boat? You know, who's going to build the boat? And that was his way. Um, he would reference Prophet Nui Salam's story and just, you know, like, you, you've got to build that boat. And that is what hope is, that even on dry land, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Nui Salam to build that boat and he did it. And so ask yourself, you know, again, as we move forward, inshallah, as we carry his light and legacy and what he taught us and the mission he stood for us, that I'm going to carry that boat. So I want you guys to affirm that for yourself. Sheikh Muhammad loved when I did my affirmation. So I want you guys to type that into the chat that you're here and you're going to carry, you're going to build the boat. You are going to carry this forward, inshallah. You are going to continue um, staying connected and committed to your path and growth because he was about helping Muslims elevate their life and be that best version of themselves, alhamdulillah. Um, so inshallah now we're gonna have Sister Manaho Begwala who alhamdulillah, um, she you know she came into Discovery U a few years ago. We got to, to have her on for some programs and she's been an amazing addition to our work. Sheikh Mohammed is so proud of having her um, part of his work and mission. And so I'm so grateful Manaho that you're here with us. And I wanted Manahil and the team, you know, we really thought it would be fitting to have Manal here and talk about um, just, inshallah, you know, she, she's a registered um, a counselor and therapist. And we wanted her to talk about just the process of grief. And again, I know that many of you are going through that very real grief that all of us are feeling. And so um, she's going to, inshallah, share some reminders with us and, you know, alhamdulillah, the strength that our faith gives us. And so how we can connect and understand that grief and you know find find those moments inshallah of peace and healing so manahal i'm gonna ask you to come on and share inshallah a few words jazakallah khair assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh um raja just to confirm can you hear me okay Inshallah, we'll go ahead and get started. I will be back in the So, I've been asked today to talk a little bit about the grieving process and kind of how to cope with the grief as we all collectively mourn the loss of Sheikh Muhammad al Sharif. And, you know, this is a very unique kind of uh, time because it's not one person's loss this is really a loss for every single one of us and you know we can see from the people who knew him very intimately to the people who were just touched by his lessons from a distance it's you know every single one of us is feeling the pain of this moment and the fact is that there's nothing that me or anyone else can say that's going to take away that pain because grief in its nature is difficult and this is a painful moment for every single one of us and so more than teaching anyone how to cope with, about how to cope with grief, I'm here today 
to share in the grief with you. And I think that's a really, really important component of alhamdulillah what's naturally happening just because of the legacy that Sheikh Muhammad left behind is that we're all grieving together and taking, you know, as part of the coping, we're taking the lessons that he left us with. And so in the grief and the pain of that, we're also seeing this immense beauty of how Sheikh Muhammad is being remembered by so many people. Again, those who knew him very, very closely to those who knew of him just through what he taught. And, you know, as I was thinking about this, it reminded me of the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves one of his slaves, he calls out to Jibreel and says, I love so and so and so, love him. And then Jibreel loves him. And then he, Jibreel, announces to the inhabitants, to the people of the heavens, that Allah loves so and so, so love him. And the inhabitants, all the angels also then love him. And then all the people on the earth also love that person. And, you know, this hadith just, it, it feels so real when we think about Sheikh Muhammad. You know, he was and is loved by so many people. And a testament to that is just how many people are showing up. How many people, I mean, my social media news feeds are, that's all I see on there. And so he not only touched the lives of so many, I think Razi gave the example of, you know, Steve Jobs. And he not only touched the lives of many, but he was loved by every single person who knew him. And so this is the irony of the grieving process. This is the irony of loss is that love and grief are a package deal. And we cannot love truly if we're not willing to grieve, right? And this is the... the just how this dunya has been built. I want to talk a little bit about how grieving in and of itself can be a blessing. And it's hard to talk about because I want to preface actually anything I say by acknowledging the pain that's there. Because it's the most important part of the grieving process is to be aware, to acknowledge the emotions that are there, all the feelings that are there, all that is coming up, whether you feel paralyzed or you feel pulled into doing or whether you, you're confused, whatever it is to acknowledge that, right? The pain, the sadness, everything. And also recognize the beauty that's coming from it. These two things can go together, right? And so one of the things that comes to mind in doing this is acknowledging the function of grief, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put emotions within us for a reason. Just as love lets us know about the connection that we have with someone, that there is a person or a thing that's important to us, in this case, how important Sheikh Muhammad was to every single one of us, right? That we appreciate this person. And maybe some of us are recognizing that appreciation after his departure, but the fact that he had an impact. So just like that, that's what love tells us. Grief lets us know that we have lost someone important. It gives us information about how important this person was to us. It's a confirmation that we had something that we truly cherished and cared about, that this relationship was real, that this relationship was so valued by us. And it lets us know that this loss has now, that we're now confronted with it and gives us a way to pause. Right, that's what grief does is that it helps us kind of slow down and say, Oh my goodness. Right. And that testament to that is just how many people, even Sheikh Amman mentioned, you know, it, it seems surreal, right? We were looking at the messages, we're checking and seeing, okay, is this real? Is this, am I reading this right? Right. Just how slowly it is sinking in and it's still sinking in, right? Razia mentioned, I'm just waiting for Sheikh to show up on the screen. That's all part of the grief because it helps us slow down to digest what really the, the value of what it is that we lost, right? And so, you know, I wanna give everyone the analogy of grief, right? That is often given in the mental health world is that it's like the waves of the ocean, right? And when the waves come, grief hits you like waves that just keep coming and coming and coming and they knock you off your feet. And they might pull you under and there might be moments where it feels so overwhelming that you can't breathe, that any thought of a future or you know moving forward can don't feel possible. 
But what I want to point out, and I, you know, I would imagine that this is where many of us are still in that stage right now. And if any one of you has experienced the loss of a loved one, you may be all too familiar with this feeling. But what I want to point out is that there's a difference between grief and grieving, right? Grief is that getting hit by the wave. It's that emotional state that just completely, completely knocks you off your feet, right? It is also bound by time, right? Grieving, however, is the journey. It's how we learn over time as the waves become more manageable, as the waves don't feel as intense anymore. We learn to live and adapt to a world in which the person who had such an impact on us, that a world where we can carry the legacy of Sheikh Muhammad with us despite his absence, to feel the presence of everything that he did in his life. And so one of the things that we want to keep in mind as we move from grief into the grieving process is that our relationship to the grief will change over time, right? And as we digest the news that he's no longer with us, that he's not going to pop onto the screen, that he's not going to give us those words of encouragement, that he physically won't be there, that we can think, I don't want this to be true, but I recognize it. And I know that I can continue moving forward with his teachings, right? And so when we think about coping for us as Muslims, you know, it's, it's beautiful because as, as I was thinking about what to say, I was, you know, Razia mentioned, it's almost as though he was preparing us for this, right? His last message that he put on social media was that doing nothing is not an option, right? And so as we cope with the grief, the first thing that we have to remember is that we make space for all of the emotions, all of the feelings that are there, and that our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us grounded enough that those emotions don't become the drivers of our actions and of our words. The beautiful example of Sheikh, um, sorry, of Yaqub alayhi salam comes to mind. He was the embodiment of Sabrun Jamil when he lost his son Yusuf alayhi salam. And then he lost his younger son. And as he remembers them, he cries. All of that emotion is there. And so I want to just kind of point that out that in these moments, the tears are going to flow. In these, in these moments that grief is going to be there, right? And for every single one of us, it's gonna show up differently. There's no one way to do grief, right? It's unique for every single one of us, but it's going to be there. And the first step is to acknowledge and alhamdulillah for platforms like this, where we have opportunities to express what's happening for us, what we're experiencing, sharing memories. That is such a beautiful opportunity that we've been given. Right. And as a reminder, this is this is part of our human experience. But this is also something that we've been taught in the example of the Prophet. Right. He experienced a full range of emotions, but his emotions never took over. Right. And we know the famous words of the Prophet when his son passed away, that the eyes weep and the heart grieves, that grief is there. But the tongue only says that which pleases my Lord. And so in this moment, we take the legacy, the teachings of Sheikh Muhammad and use the grief to help connect us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? As Razi mentioned, if he were here, he'd say, okay, let's move on. Let's keep moving, right? That's what he taught us. He paved the way for people to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that was, that is his legacy, whether it was through his unwavering conviction in du'a and the way that he gave du'a or through the studying of Islamic sciences in which he, again, created the path, right? So thinking about this moving forward, not moving on, I think there is a difference to be, you know, a distinction that we have to make, right? That when we think about people that we've lost people who we love that are no longer with us. We don't necessarily move on, but we do move forward with them, with everything that they gave to us in our life. And so 
what Sheikh Muhammad gave to so many of us through his example or through his teachings was the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was the empathy that he showed to everyone. You know, there's been, you know, in, in the many ways that he's being remembered, there's a, a voice note that he left for a young girl who was going through a very difficult life situation. And he shared with her the message of the hadith where the Prophet said, um, that the, the, the affair of the believer is strange because there's good for the believer in everything, whether it's a, it's a happy occasion and a believer is grateful or a difficult occasion in which the believer shows patience. And so the message that he gave to this little girl was to always ask, how is this good for me? And so as we collectively come together to cope with the loss of Sheikh Muhammad, I remind myself and all of you to ask this question, how is this good for us? And not only that, but out of love for him to say, how can we take what he has taught us and make it sadaqa jariya for him? And so as we process the grief, there might be a time where, you know, it's we're still digesting it, right? Where we're st it still feels surreal. It doesn't, it hasn't fully sunk in yet. And that's okay. That's okay. That's part of the stages of grief of really not being able to fully grasp that he's gone. But in that, we ground ourselves in knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-kareem when he gives and when he takes. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praiseworthy in all circumstances, the happy and the difficult. And so in this time, we notice all of the emotions, but we remain grounded in knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, knowing that there's some good for us in this. And that's not a denial. That's not a way to say, well, that's supposed to make me feel better. We hold both, that it hurts and it's painful and that there's khair that can come from it. And so in the stages of grief, you know, we don't, we don't have anger towards Allah. We don't bargain and say, well, what if this, what if that? That opens the doors to shaitan. We come to a place where we feel the sadness and, you know, and, and, and we feel the pain, but we accept. And that's the last stage of the stages of grief where we accept. And it might not happen right away. It might not happen for a while. But acceptance is where we can hold the sadness and the ability to move forward. It doesn't mean the absence of sadness, right? Because when someone leaves us, as we think about the loss of Sheikh Muhammad, right now that grieving, the stage of grieving that we're in, there's a lot of pain, a lot of sadness, so much heaviness. And you can feel it, right? You can feel that heaviness in your heart. But over time, the grieving process is one, and this is the beauty of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability to heal, the ability to move forward, that the grieving will still be there, but it gets to a point where it doesn't have to be with pain, where we can grieve with love. And just from all of the stories that we hear about Sheikh Muhammad, about how much love and empathy and genuine care he gave to people, I have no doubt that his legacy will be one that will live on where we can all collectively grieve his loss with love, but also in a way where we continue to live by what he models for us, to live a life of meaning, because that's what he taught us, right? That doing nothing is not an option, that we continue to work because ultimately our connection is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what he taught us. So as we come together to remember his legacy, I remind myself and all of you that this is a time for us to remember the lessons that he taught us in terms of our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what, you know, Razia mentioned, and so many people have mentioned that he, it was never about him, it was about the bigger picture, right? And we take this time to remember how he nurtured those around him, right? And we take those gems and we start to embody those things. The grieving process here can be so beautiful and one of growth. And it might not happen right away. It might take time for us to move beyond the feelings of pain and sadness. But ultimately, 
what Sheikh Muhammad has taught us and what our deen teaches us ultimately is that there is a path forward, that there is a legacy that we can continue to live by. And so I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us all ease during this time, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us wisdom and that he grants us grounding as we pass through this grief into the journey of grieving and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the ability to move forward and live a life of meaning in a way that we can be a sadaqa jariya for Sheikh Muhammad to live his legacy in a way that is meaningful for us and meaningful for him. Rahimahullah. Jazakumallahu khairan. Jazakumallahu khairan. You know, something that subhanAllah tomorrow was supposed to be a three-day challenge that we were going to start with Sheikh Muhammad and he actually picked the name of this challenge himself, which was rising above the tide. And he said that, you know, with every good thing going on right now, he wants to give that message and he wants to speak to people about rising above, you know, whatever tide is coming our way, the believer is one of hope and action. And um, I have it on my calendar that, you know, we're going to start tomorrow. And he was so excited for this. Um, he's been planning it for months. And, you know, again, like, I just want people to connect with that. Some of you are already in that challenge in that group. Um, that was his, one of his final messages, right? And that how befitting subhanAllahs were holding on to that. And, um, you know, he was he was constantly about, and so many of you are sharing your experiences, obviously, through the message in class. And Manahal, um, you got to take Visionaire with us as well a couple times, right? And it was like so many of us, our, the chapter in our life probably that we've been in for a while was one of, that one that was crafted by Dua. I was telling my husband last night, I was like, this this decade of my life feels like it's you know my, my dream life and it was it was inspired from Sheikh Mohammed you know constantly challenging us to raise our dua raise the standard of our life through dua and you know alhamdulillah alhamdulillah like, inshallah as we're grieving for us to constantly hold on to that So this, this, you know, reflection from Razia, it's so, it's so beautiful, you know, that um, one of the things that comes to mind is just how Sheikh Muhammad made the most of everything, that he really was someone who raised the bar, right? And that's the lesson that we can take from him, that as we, as we go through this process of grief, he, you know, he was human just like all of us, right? And just like we're facing grief now, he undoubtedly also faced it. And we think about, you know, how he really took his ability to understand his emotional intelligence was really something profound, right? Just the examples that we've been given um, just, just in today, right? Of Razi about how he really spent time with the people um, who worked with him to make them feel valued and heard and, you know, um, how he showed up for Sheikh Omar when he wasn't feeling well, right? These are all, you know, and so I think about this and I think about someone who took the best of everything, right? We saw the, you know, the vision that he had and now he can't, you know, he was bringing this program of rising above the tide, right? And it's so, it's so amazing, subhanAllah, that, you know, this, this thought of rising above the tide, because, you know, it just fits with this idea that grief is like waves. And it's almost like he set this foundation to say, yes, this wave is going to hit, right? This was like from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that he, you know, and I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it, right? That it's like, he set the groundwork for us to grieve in the most beautiful way to rise above the tide almost like he let us know like don't worry you can do it 
that you will rise above the tide. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's, it's, um, there are so many things that make, you know, now when we look at them, we're like, this is, this was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving him, inspiring him to prepare all of us, to mentor us in how to grieve his death. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. Alhamdulillah. This was so helpful. Um, so many students were commenting in the chat, like, alhamdulillah, they, like they needed to hear that and the tools that you gave. So Jazakallah khair for being with us and grieving with us. And, you know, despite that, being able to pull together and be here because Alhamdulillah, that's that's the kind of team that Shaykh Muhammad built. So Mana, mashallah, you're such a testament to that. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah. So inshallah, we're going to have uh, Shaykh Amar al-Shokri uh, come on and he's going to share, inshallah, some of his memories, reminders, and he's going to lead us in a dua as well. Um, you guys all know Sheikh Amar. He's been, mashallah, obviously he's the instructor with Al-Maghrib. He's been part of our Discovery programs. And um, I was letting him know uh, the other day as well that, you know, Sheikh Mohammed used to speak about Amar like a son. Like he was, mashallah, so, um, you know, he, he, Sheikh Amar has shared kind of his journey with Sheikh Mohammed and I'll let him share that, inshallah, um, when he comes on. But, um, you know, Sheikh would always speak about him as again like a, a son that he was proud of his achievements alhamdulillah he always wanted to push amar forward to go take the reins to you know continue on mashallah like the impact that he's having through his work through his amazing talents and um he, he was very proud of him alhamdulillah so we're really um you know alhamdulillah happy that amar is able to be here with us and inshallah share a few of his memories and words um around sheikh muhammad salaikum amar you're just on mute. I can't hear you. Okay. We'll just wait for Sheikh Amar to get set up, inshallah. Nope, can't hear you still. Okay, sounds good. So he's just going to join back, inshallah. Um, as he's doing that, one of the things that I also wanted to highlight as I was kind of thinking of, um, you know, when Sheikh Omar was speaking about the classes, Sheikh Mohammed was not in the business of just building classes or programs. He was in the business of building people. And that's something that I, I realized early on. Oh, are you there? You're good. Yes. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Go ahead and I'll hand it over to you. May Allah Azzawajal have mercy on Shaykh Muhammad uh, and grant him Jannah and reward us in our calamity and replace us with what's better than it and grant his family beautiful patience and watch over them as he watches over his righteous servants. Uh, Shaykh Muhammad means a lot to me Al Maghrib means a lot to me, and I actually didn't attend a lot of Al Maghrib seminars with Sheikh Muhammad because he taught a little bit before I was aware of the wave. And by the time that I became aware of Al Maghrib, he had already moved to Canada. But a few lessons uh, I was able to, alhamdulillah, work closely with him uh, afterwards as a as a volunteer and as Al Maghrib staff and uh, benefit from his mentorship as well as you know taking trips to Canada to attend his Discover You programs. And what's special I think, or one of the things that's special about Sheikh Muhammad is that he didn't really require a lot of time to have impact on people. And when you talk about the amount of people who can discuss and, and, and feel like they had a closeness to him is because he very much number one i think after his you know what we expect his sincerity to allah mm. subhanahu wa ta'ala was also that he embodied what he taught and when you embody what you teach you have a greater effect on people than when you simply teach things that you're reading in books and so when Sheikh Muhammad is talking to you about the importance of dua, you believe it because he embodies 
living by Torah. One of the great lessons I think from his life is the incredible, extreme intentionality that he lived life with. Rahimahullah ta'ala. You know, I, uh, Razia, I heard her say yesterday that, or earlier today, she, just now in the webinar actually, time is being jumbled in my mind, but she, she said that he designed his life. And that's a good word to use, design. Life wasn't something that just happened to him. He very much, you know, the idea of every six months, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to audit my life. And I'm going to think deeply about where I want my life to go in the next six months. And then I'm going to spend those six months making dua for it. That's incredible intentionality. And that's really, really beautiful. And it's a great lesson for a person to absorb in their life from Sheikh Muhammad. Sheikh Muhammad, when I say intentionality, maybe many of you may not know that when he founded on Maghrib, he founded on Maghrib in his 20s. And he founded on Maghrib at a time when you know there wasn't a, a, there wasn't that much of a of an attraction you know there were still a lot of gatekeepers when it came to when it came to teaching islam there was a lot of gatekeepers and those gatekeepers were you know the 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 elderly scholars and you would need permission to go and walk into somebody's masjid and speak on the microphone and sheikh muhammad in his 20s in a city like or in a place like Maryland that was filled with scholars way more senior than him and way more knowledgeable than him even he still saw and had a vision for what Islamic education could be and he felt like there was a vacuum that he could fill and he was confident enough in his abilities and with the resources that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him and the blessings that Allah had given him that he would be the one to step in and to fill that void. He didn't. He didn't uh, waste time trying to feel like you know what I need to ask everybody's permission. Um, I need to convince other people about my idea because they're the ones who are more senior to me than they're the ones who. And and this is something that he taught. Whether you took one of his like niche hero programs and he talks about wow ideas and the fact that you have to be a one man wow show and that. People won't believe in your idea. It's your idea. You're the one who has to grow it. You're the one who has to work for it. You're the one who has to develop it. You're the one who has to put in the time and effort. And then when your idea manifests, that's when people will become attracted to your idea. But Sheikh Muhammad rahimahullah ta'ala had that confidence to be able to create Al-Maghrib. And then something as impressive to me as creating Al-Maghrib and making it successful and teaching seminars and, 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 and revolutionizing really how Islam was taught to the English-speaking audience in the Western world, Sheikh Muhammad steps away from Al-Maghrib. And this is just as intentional as intentional gets. That when you are one of the most sought-after teachers and you can travel the world and you, you can teach Islam in a way that Everybody does. Everybody does. This is the way that everybody does it. If you go and you teach a seminar and there's 300 people there or 500 people there or 200 people there, I mean, what's better for a da'iyah? What's better is that Sheikh Muhammad would come home from traveling and he would find that his daughter had gotten a little bit older or that she was saying words that he didn't know that she could say before and he missed out on her development. And so Sheikh Muhammad you know, and, and I, I've heard this from him in Visionaire and other places, and he would say that that made him incredibly sad. And so he didn't want to travel and leave his family anymore. And he then decided that he was not going to teach seminars anymore. He wanted to spend time with his, with his family. And so because he would pave his way with dua, his life, design his life with dua, his dua then became, oh Allah, allow me to teach people without having to leave my family and discover you is born and this last decade of his life you see incredible connection from students all over the world that he was able to affect still in profound ways but from the comfort of his own home rahimahullah ta'ala it's almost something like it reminds me of the dua of umar ibn khattab and he's asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow him to pass away as a martyr in medina and even his daughter house was saying like how can you pass away like, how does that work? Like, how do you pass away as a martyr in Medina when Medina is the most safe city in the Muslim world? That's not going to happen. But he's making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muhammad is Allah to be able to give da'wah without having to leave his family. And 
I mean, for me, one of the lessons is that he was always, Sheikh Umar said that he was a paradox of personality. I think he's also a paradox of lifestyles. Like he was able to combine accomplishments that you don't find. He's very unique in that. He's able to combine accomplishments that you don't find combined in a single person. And so, but the reason why he was able to do all of that is because he was never ever dependent on himself. He would always depend on Allah Azza wa Jal. And he would encourage others to dream big and to think big. So living life with that intention, always, always making sure that you are spending your time doing the thing that is most beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal and the thing that's most beloved to you, even if it's not what people expect from you. And so for me, him stepping away from the Maghrib, founding Discovery, still continuing to give da'wah at a high level. He didn't just retire into the sunset anywhere. He lived his life fulfilling his passion. He lived his life with da'wah. One of the things that's a major lesson for me from Shaykh Muhammad also is I think everybody who's ever worked with him, his his demanding of excellence. You know, he used to, he used to, he, he, and he was amazing at creating slogans for culture and things like that. And so he used to always teach us Islam deserves better. Islam deserves better. And so one story I remember is back in the day, we, we used to do Elminars for al Maghrib. Elm is just a webinar, but we put the word Elm in front of it. And this was back when webinars were a very early thing. This is probably like 2007, 2008, I feel like. And Sheikh Muhammad was going to be teaching a course on Tafsir Juzamma. And so he was invited, we invited Sheikh Muhammad, I mean the al Maghrib team, and he confirmed and we kind of, for whatever reason, whatever reason, the marketing was just sloppy. It wasn't enough. The, the, the distribution of the marketing, the email, all of that stuff just didn't, it wasn't uh, up to par. And the webinar happens, and you know, there's 300 people live waiting for the webinar, and Sheikh Muhammad is not coming on. People are calling him, people are texting him, Sheikh, where are you? There's all, all these people on. He's not coming on. And then, and, you know, a that that he demands from everybody was not put in the marketing of one aspect of, of the event. Sorry to you guys. So um, I think Sheikh Hamar just having a connection is, issue. So we'll just wait for him to reconnect, inshallah. Um, but alhamdulillah, you know, it's so beautiful to hear some of those you know, behind the scenes that you don't expect. Um, one of the things that um, I learned, obviously, from Sheikh Muhammad was, um, you know, alhamdulillah, he had the spiritual knowledge and that aspect that he approached um, things with. But one of the, he had a master's in marketing. And one of the things um, that you would see Sheikh come alive in, and those of you that took Nishiro, was actually in business. He not only lived um, or, or taught strategy uh, or planned his life around the law, but he was about strategy, right? He, um, mashallah, would always share that, you know, the Prophet, وسلم, how, how, like, of course, it was from, you know, the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the Prophet وسلم, was all about strategy. And so Shaykh Muhammad heavily taught that and believed in that and empowered people, you know, it's something that's not work, well, let's just re strategize. And, it, it was like the knowledge and Marshall, the eye he had for that was incredible. So I think that's one of the things that obviously um, on the front, maybe um, you don't appreciate, but if you've ever taken the Al-Maghrib class discovery program, like that is not, you know, the success of Alhamdulillah, the way things are taught, but the way that you connect, the experience you have as a student, that is all part of the incredible strategy and ihsan that he approached his work with and you know refused uh to to let let the bar um fall and even yesterday subhanallah iman suhaib web was actually sharing um back in the day when he had taught uh and one al-maghrib class and he was first introduced to it 
how, you know, kind of the manual for uh, a monk of instructors that Sheikh Mohammed had put together, the recommendations was, you know, the night before, drink green tea um, and, you know, go through a detox so your body is able to handle because, you know, two, two days or really two and a half days full of teaching, the impact it can have. And so, subhanAllah, um, Imam Sahiba was like, I was just blown away. He's like, who is this guy? Like, you know, he's integrating the, like a holistic practice when it comes to giving people, alhamdulillah, not just knowledge, but really that experience and that level of ihsan that you as an instructor need to have. And I thought that was so, um, you know, subhanAllah, incredible that, you know, Sheikh Muhammad didn't just approach it from this channel, he had everything in mind and covered, and that was part of strategy. So, you know, when you're here, inshallah, and you're reflecting on his life, you're connecting with the memories, um, just remember that for yourself. Like, how do I approach my life with that kind of strategy? Um, is Sheikh Amar back? So, can you hear me? Yes, I can, alhamdulillah. I had to switch to my phone. I don't know what's happening with my internet, but... Um, uh, so, Sheikh Mohammed. Sheikh Muhammad, he sends this uh, uh, this email basically saying that it's not that he he wouldn't make the event because we all knew that we did not put in that effort. That, and that what that did was, a, was kind of like a, a reminder to all of us of, of the excellence that we're capable of. And so we turn, turn around and, you know, get up to you, all of that type of stuff. And it, it's... And, these amazing lectures came came Sheikh Muhammad is going to come with excellence. And he's he's demanding that everybody else meet. And I remember uh, uh, that came out of that series, some of you know these classic lectures, uh, the fasting and the furious and, and you and Jannah. These were all that uh, you know came out of that demand that Sheikh Muhammad had. And, and one of the things also that I'm reminded of with regards to Sheikh Muhammad is how he, he wanted to make sure that others excelled. Um, for me, his imprint on my life is, is very, very clear, not just in Maghrib, but also what I do um, as far as, as, as teaching. You know, my first and, you know, my first uh, poem that's recorded anywhere was at a Sheikh Muhammad event. I don't remember what the event was. It might have been Nichiro. And it was one of those things where I kind of need to be pushed. I'm one of those people who need to be pushed into an uncomfortable situation. You know, um, and Sheikh Muhammad's like, no, you have to write something and you have to perform it today. Done. And I had to write a poem, kind of just wrote it and and memorize it and i remember sitting there to the side kind of memorizing it and sheikh Naved is there and i'm trying to memorize a poem that i just wrote and then i go and i perform it and it's kind of kind of like sluttering through it but i did it and that was sheikh Muhammad. and uh you know uh, my facebook page that i created giving reminders and things like that i i did not see myself qualified in the slightest super imposter syndrome but it was at a Sheikh Muhammad event where it's like, okay, you're going to do this. And you, there's no way out. You're going to create it and you're going to move forward. And I'm literally like an ostrich putting my head in the, in the sand. I remember creating the page when I'm clicking publish to create this page. I'm, I'm like, my, if I could put my head under the desk, I would have. And he forces people to grow. And he didn't just do that for me. He did that for everybody that he interacted with. And that's part of the reason why those who are... That's why he's called a mentor by, by so many people. That's why so many people feel that they were, that knowing him was so impactful on their lives. Not because he necessarily spent a lot of time in their lives, but the, the time that he spent, he was challenging them and he was allowing them to be better than who they were before they met him or before they interacted with him. Also something that um, just really beautiful to me about Sheikh Muhammad is how comfortable he was being himself it's really hard to kind of contextualize if you weren't there what sheikhs looked like in 2000 coming out of the 90s you know 2020 uh, or 2002 2003 when sheikh Muhammad arrived on the scene like a sheikh is supposed to carry themselves in a certain way sheikh is supposed to talk in a certain way a sheikh is supposed to look a certain way 
And here he is, you know, pounding his chest, assalamu alaikum, you know what I mean? And, and talking in the way that he talks. Sheikh Muhammad, uh, and until very recently, I remember commenting on one of his videos because he was, looked like he was having the most fun in the world on TikTok and, you know, all of these other channels on Instagram. And, and I, 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 I commented and I told him, I said, Sheikh, you just look like you're having so much fun with these platforms. And that's who he was. He allowed he himself was comfortable in his own skin. He didn't shy away from being exactly who he he is. And what that does is it allowed other people to do the same. It allowed people the confidence to be able to be uh, themselves as well. And so, I mean, there's a, there's a lot that um, can be said about his life, but I think just the, the love that he had for dua, the intentionality that he lived his life, the urgency with which he lived his, his life, um, you know, starting in Maghrib in his 20s, that's urgency. Leaving in Maghrib so he could spend time with his family, that's urgency. Um, and, and that demand of excellence that he had for Islam, it wasn't for himself, but he believed that Islam always deserved better. Islam deserves the best. And, um, and, and you'll be hearing that reverberating from everybody who interacted with him in, in, in different forms. And of course, by being his, uh, by being himself, being as, as unique as he is which is we all have that potential because there's nobody else who can be but you everybody else is taken and so uh, being comfortable in your own skin um the last thing that i'll mention is just what we should take from or some of what we should take from this of course is the urgency of life of course the pro uh, the chef Muhammad passing away suddenly like everybody else I was stunned um and still grieving but we have to you know, learn the lesson that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, calls people back whenever he wishes. That's what the statement means. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We all belong to Allah. We all belong to Allah. We're all on loan from Allah azza wa jal until we are called back to him. So, and to him we return. And that notion, and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that Manahil mentioned that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kareem in what he gives and what he takes away. When... Al Abbas passed away. A man, a Bedouin, came to Ibn Abbas and he gave him condolences. And when he was given, when he was giving Al Abbas, uh, Ibn Abbas condolences, he says, "Isbir, nakun bika sabirin, fa inna ma sabru al-raiyati and the sabir al-rasi. Khairu min al Abbasi sabru ka baghdahu. Wallahu khairu min kali al Abbasi." He says, "Be patient. We will be patient with your patience, because the patience of a flock is based on the patience of its leader." And then he says, better than Al Abbas is your patience after him. Even better than the presence of Al Abbas is the reward that you get through being patient at this calamity. And Allah is better for Al Abbas than you. Allah is better for Al Abbas than you. We love Sheikh Muhammad, rahimahullah, but we all know that he's going to a company that is the highest company, and he's going to a company that is better for him than all of us. And he is going to the company of the most generous, the most kind, the most merciful. And so we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to have mercy on his slave, his servant, Muhammad al-Sharif. We ask Allah to expand his grave as far as his eyes can see. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it a, bal a balcony, his grave a balcony through which he sees his real estate in Jannah. That Allah Azza wa Jal beautifies his reception. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant his family beautiful, beautiful patience and reward them in their calamity. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watch over them and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises them a beautiful raising. We ask Allah to forgive Sheikh Muhammad his sins. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleanse them. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala washes them. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards him with everything good that he did and everything that he intended to do. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes our collective witness over him. An intercession for him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it something that is wajiba, something that is written. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make the best of Sheikh Muhammad's days the day that he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah gather him with the prophets and the martyrs and the righteous and the truthful. And what excellent companions are those? And that Allah makes us the best khalaf, the best successors of the best predecessors, and that Allah allows us to benefit from everything that Sheikh Muhammad teached and that he reunites us all with him in Jannatil Firdaus. I mean, Allahumma, I mean, just like Allah, Sheikh Omar, thank you for sharing those memories and letting us 
you know, have that peek into the life and uh, memories you have of him. Alhamdulillah, I want to thank um, all the students who were here with us today, Jazakallah Khair, for sharing in this, you know, this very real and raw grief that's here for all of us still. Thank you for being with us for the du'as. Inshallah, tomorrow we also have a program at 12 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be here, inshallah, again on um, the Al Maghrib page, Sheikh Mohammed's page on the YouTube, the same links. And we're going to have all the Al Maghrib instructors, inshallah, coming to share um, you know, their memories, a few reminders, and do'a tomorrow. So I uh, feel, you know, I invite you to join us, invite your family members. Um, Alhamdulillah, it is through, you know, du'a, it is through obviously coming together as a community and grieving that gives a lot of us, um, inshallah, the strength and that closure um, to continue and honor his legacy. We have also set up a global group, a Facebook group to come together and for you guys to share some of your memories of Sheikh Mohammed. Um, you can go in there, you can do a Facebook Live, um, connect with each other, share a post. You know, Alhamdulillah, through sharing some of these stories, you know, brings a smile to your face. Some of you sharing that you can remember his laugh. One of the things that a lot of people didn't know was, um, and Sheikh had shared this sometimes, but he would laugh at awkward moments. And it was his way of kind of being like coping with the discomfort. And so um, it was really, it was really funny. You know, he'd be talking about something really heavy and he would start laughing. Sometimes I'd have to come on camera to kind of let people know this is just Sheikh being Sheikh, subhanAllah. And um I just, yeah, subhanAllah, you know, he was just so real and human. And alhamdulillah, um, I invite you to join that group and to share your experiences, your memories. It, it's going to be a beautiful way, I think, for us to, again, come collectively together. So inshallah, I'll see you tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern. Jazakallah khair for being here with us um, and allowing us to you know, be with you during this time. Jazakallah khair, everyone. Inshallah, I will see you tomorrow.